Well, glory to God. Here we are, Jesus Experience. I'm Dr. Gary Whetstone, and tonight we have a very special guest that has been with me for, oh my goodness, how many years, Pastor 20, Judy? Well, really 30 years. 30 years. But so, here at the ministry, work in 27. 27. So she's young in the ministry here, 27 <laughs> years, but we've served the Lord together for many, many years, Pastor Judy Shipley, and we're going to take you on a journey today to bring triumph and victory in prevailing through your proclamation and then acting according to what's in your heart and mouth. But first, let's do what we do best. Get every care, distraction, frustration, anxiety, concern, worry, burden, thought, influence, words of other people, separate ourselves from all atmosphere so you and I, Pastor Judy, with you can bring grace and truth to bear. Father, we thank you. As we covenant together, we commit into your hands our way. We separate ourselves to fulfill your high call and we sever ourselves because your word is sharper than any two-edged sword from every word, atmosphere, environment, care, concern, worry, frustration, thought, perception. God, we are not the atmosphere of the echo of this world. We are the atmosphere of your anointing in this world. So God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, first, before we get into our topic today, I believe you need to understand a little bit of what Pastor Judy does and what her responsibilities are in ministry and how she's benefited your life in the last 27 years here at Victory and Jesus Experience. So what do you do here? What? Well, I'm an associate pastor here at the ministry and I work in the follow-up ministry, which means my favorite thing in all the world to do is pastoral care. I love people. I love talking with the people. I love praying for the people. I love going to hospitals and helping families when they're going through things and uh, when they're going through funerals and have death in their families or just life. I just love blessing people and helping them to um, get through challenges, grow spiritually. And I do the membership here at Victory, um, licensing and ordination. Okay. And um, favorite thing, though, is the follow-up and the pastoral care. So when you have a particular issue and need, you can call our prayer line. And our prayer ministers that have been trained through the ministry here, Pastor Judy's over the whole prayer ministry responsibility, and those that have been empowered and trained will stand with you, pray for you. If you're in our region of care, we'll come support that which is in a conflict. If not, then we can help you online through prayer and in any way possible we can serve. We're here to make a difference in your life. So, you know, Pastor Judy, one of the things that everybody experiences, everyone that's on Jesus experience, they experience an everyday life. Uh, stuff comes at them from every angle, every way possible, their family, their history, their circumstances, the frustrations, the perception in line with another person. Did they, did they feel like they're successful or failing? Or, I mean, all this stuff just fills the atmosphere of people's minds. And, and uh, now, how, how many children are you caring for in your home? Well, we have six children that are in the house now. We have six that are out of the house, six uh, young, young adult children, but six that are still in the house. Okay, so 12 children. Yes. And uh, some of those that are out of the house now have children. Yes. So it's multiplying. The, yes. And uh, the, the world of the world that goes on around this family multiplies. You might have three children you're thinking you're pulling your hair out. Well, thank God we've got enough hair. God has every hair numbered and <laughs> we can't, you know, we can't pull out enough. We just thank God he keeps growing more. So what do you do in a, a functionality when all of this information from the school calls to uh, the child calls to somebody calls from the ministry with prayer and needs and how do you keep your mind and 
you may have a very similar situation where you've got a lot of areas pulling on you and, and you got to keep that mind free. You, you, if you don't, you bring over into the next relationship all the former relationships and it's like the water gets real muddy. What do you do? Well, Pastor, we're also caring for our 90-year-old, uh, my mother-in-law, um, who's at an end-of-life stage and so she's there too. And I think that, you know, the Word of God says that we are fully equipped for every good work. And when you know and understand that what is in your life, God has purposed that, God has placed that in your life, like all the children that we have, God, God put them there. And it's a part of the purpose of God for my husband and I. And so God's equipped us. He's given us everything that we need to be able to handle every situation that comes. And he's given us peace. Um, and it's a matter of that word of God, professing that word of God, knowing that the word of God works. What God has spoken concerning your life, concerning my life, it works. And whatever situation you find yourself in, you use that word of God to like, like just the, the profession, you know, of the blessing of the Lord is upon the house of the righteous. How many times a day do I say that? Numerous times, because I know the more that I confess that, the more I possess what God's word has said that I have. Okay. And so it, I believe it's, it's a daily just professing the Word of God, confessing the Word of God, and then you possess what the Word of God says that you have. So, if you, many people use a, a morning prayer time as a, a launch point. David said, early will I seek you to see your face, to see your power as I did in the sanctuary. And every day I begin with a complete clearing of the day in my spirit and focal point on the person of the Lord Jesus, his life enriching and empowering within. And then I set the priorities of the day because there are a plethora of things that must be accomplished during the course of the day. It, it isn't one thing. It's not like I mean, you were here just right before we, we came on and we've got people running in and out and everything from air conditioning, heat loss, to thermal loads, to connectors to the back of a trailer, to developing the Global Education Initiative and where do I fly next and what mission objectives are we going to take and oh, there's an interruption in the schedule and right. oh, we have Bible schools that we have to keep running. So, you know, just, mm -hmm. it's just a normal 15 minutes. Right, mm -hmm. very this busy. Is just 15 <laughs> minutes, yeah. So the, the key that I want you to hear that Pastor Judy shared is that Deuteronomy 30 verse 14, it says, but the word is very nigh you. It's right there in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Now, in the New Testament, it's very clear. And it, it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it eat the fruit thereof. Now, when I get that understanding as out of my mouth cannot come blessing and cursing, out, out of my mouth must come the word of God. There's one mindset that says, if I say the word of God, God's going to take care of it all. But then the environment is affecting me and I feel affected by the environment, but I've said the word of God and I believe God's take care of it all, but I'm affected by the environment. Now we know because of the providence of God, he is overriding, presiding, and his word is ruling everything. We know when we say it, we're in alignment with him but we get affected. We do, and I think that whenever you get affected by your circumstances and things that are going on, um, there's, there's always like a, like a readjusting that takes place where all of a sudden you realize, wait, you know, I'm not using the weapons of my warfare here. Um, I'm not operating in the peace of God here. Like 
you know, on a day-to-day basis, all of us have situations that can cause us to get anxious, can cause us to get to lose our peace, um, cause us to think, oh God, what am I going to do next? And um, like, for instance, okay, last night I got home and after the service, so it's 11 o'clock at night, I'm just getting ready after putting all the kids to bed to go to sleep. When I get a text from the aide that takes care of our, our mother telling me she can't be here today. She has a health issue, has to go into the hospital. So I could panic and think, oh no, what am I going to do? I have to go to work tomorrow. My husband has to go to work. I've got all these kids to get off to school. How in the world can I take care of? And so it's, you stop for a minute because the Bible says that God has, Jesus has been made wisdom unto us. So somehow in the middle of your conflict, there's the wisdom of God. And you have to access the wisdom of God. So I'm thinking, okay, wait, Lord, what do I do? If you take a minute, he said if you acknowledge him in all of your ways, he would direct your path. And so stopping for a second to say, okay, Jesus, I acknowledge you here. You have the wisdom for what my situation is. Well, I remember there's a man in our church that has a, 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 his work is called the Caring Angels, and he has people that are available to come into the home. Okay. So I'm scrolling through my phone. I couldn't remember his name, but then I see his name in my phone. And I text him 11 o'clock at night. By 6 o'clock this morning, he texts me back and said, I have somebody ready to be there at 8 o'clock. Praise God. That, that comes from, that's nothing but the wisdom of God working. And so when you allow the wisdom of God to guide what you do, and now does everything always work out so quickly? No. There's sometimes that, you know, you may have to wait a little bit, but the truth of it is, is that God's word always works. And he, the wisdom is always there within your spirit to handle any situation that you face. His wisdom is always there. It's just accessing it. So this, this brings us to a, a reality of reacting to the present crisis that is always before us. I, I love the, the Chinese parable of what a crisis is. It, it means danger with opportunity, that there is a potential catastrophic outcome, but it has the opportunity of being totally different if you see it from the wisdom of God. Now, of course, that's not a biblical perspective, but it's a real experience in life that you get notified, the care of your elderly parent is not going to be cared for. It's 11 o'clock at night. You have to leave at 8 in the morning. So who's going to be here? Now, I want you to think about this scripture for a moment, because if we dwell on the negative conflicts that occur, we become reactive to it worry, anxiety, frustration, all the restlessness at night, the, the thoughts take place. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10 says, he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. So he says, let us labor, now that means that's our work, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So here's a conflict. The work, the labor we have is not allowing that conflict to create my work. Knowing that he's rested from his work, I'm to rest from mine. So I labor to enter into his rest. So you the answer was already in your phone. Mm -hmm. The access to the answer was a peaceable thought. It wasn't, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to fix this? What, I, I can't figure this out. I've got da -da 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 all these things going on. But the answer to it was already there. Now, what would have happened had your mind been all harried and affected by 11 o'clock at night, you need to get a good night's sleep, you got a lot going on tomorrow. I wouldn't have slept, you know. I, I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep and would have been up worrying 
and fretting about what am I going to do? How am I going to make this work tomorrow? Am I going to have to call off work? Am I, you know, I, I would have probably fretted and worried, which, the, you know, yeah. the Word of God tells us that His yoke is easy and His burden is light. And, and I just believe that God has all of our cares. He says, cast your care upon Him because He cares for you. I don't believe God wants us up worrying and fretting all night. You know, the Word of God Absolutely says if He not. takes care of the birds and not one falls to the ground that your Heavenly Father doesn't know about it, how much more is He going to take care of us? And so even all the things that come against us on a day-to-day -day basis, I just believe God has the answer for all of that. And when you are in the Word of God and know that His yoke is easy, His burden is light, um, it makes life go just a lot simpler and easier just trusting him. Okay, so let, let's, let's look at, the, the scripture says, he that's entered into his rest, he also ceased from his own works. Now, if I can identify, and this is one of the greatest gifts of the, the grace of God, is the gift of discerning you. Are you in that rest? Just being able to perceive, identify that, yes, God has taken response, his functionality of care, his providence of authority and rule, his grace is sufficient. I live in a place called now that God is to me now. Then I labor to enter into that rest. I stay because I've got to do something with this information. It doesn't go away. And I must take an action on the wisdom. Otherwise, the engagement with God does not occur. So, A, I've got to remove the anxiety, frustration, fret, worry, concern. B, I must engage in that peaceable, true wisdom, pure wisdom that's coming from God to take the action. Pastor Judy talked about, I. I remembered there's a man in my church, but I couldn't remember his name, and he has this business that takes care of elder care folk. Well, at 11 o'clock at night, she's not going to be able to get back into the church. She probably would have difficulty accessing the computers to find out mm -hmm. who this person is. Fortunately, God had given her the, the, the relationship thought in the, the former Point. Of how long ago would it have been you put it in your phone? Do you oh, have? it was probably almost a year ago. A year ago. You had the thought. And I started with the alphabet because when I can't remember a name, I start with the A's and go through until something triggers. And when I started with the A's, his name started with an A. Oh, that made So as I'm easy. going down okay. my phone, I see it. And I'm like, that's him. That's him. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you know what I do? It's like if, if I'm looking for a plumber, I put down Jack Slider and I always put plumber next to it because yeah, you know, I do that too. Yeah, yeah. so like, you know, care <laughs> worker or, or you know, painter or whatever. So if I hit painter, I get a whole list of everybody who paints. But listen to the scripture. It says in verse 12 of Hebrews 4, for the word of God is quick, it's alive, it's active, it's sharper, it's powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. And then it says, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but everything is naked and open under the eyes of him to whom we will we have to do, or we will all give an account. Now, that word of God, listen very carefully. Jesus is that word of God. He has made to you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. He is that living word. You're born again of the incorruptible seed, the word that lives and abides forever. That living word saves your soul. It also is the power to divide the emotional interaction, the mental aggravation, 
and the perception of the frustration from the peaceable settling of the wisdom of God in your spirit. That word is what separates the human dimension of your soul from the God dimension of his spirit. And if I use the word of God through proclamation, and then I take action on the wisdom that is imputed, I get his works. We, we just had a gentleman come in, had a, a trailer part missing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I could say, oh no, it's not a light bulb we need. I don't know what to do. Well, how many trailers are out there in the world? Millions of them. So I told the, the young man that came in with the trailer part that was with the light out, call a trailer company. They know how to get a trailer part. So two minutes later, he comes back. Oh, we got it for, what do you say? How much it cost? Is Six dollars and something. Yeah, so, I mean, like, yes, answers. Okay, now let's move on. But my question is, when the person took the trailer part off, why didn't they get that thought? Mm -hmm. Because it's available. Why does somebody need somebody else to get the thought to direct them? So my, my question to you is this. Many times we believe we are in need of someone else to resolve and answer our conflicts. And therefore we trust that someone else has a better connection than we do. Mm -hmm. Or we trust that they have a greater life experience or uh, history of knowledge or they have studied the topic more or whatever. And I, I just want to give you a secret of my life. I've never shared this. Um, I've only shared this with many of the, the very close high level management people that I deal with in the world. And that is that I know that everything is a system. I want you to think of what I'm saying to you. I know, I know, I don't believe, I know. Everything is a system. Therefore, every system has an operation and a functional dimension of its operation electrical systems, plumbing systems, roof systems, heating, air conditioning systems, cardiovascular system, endocrine gland system, neuron transmission system, eye to optic nerve system. Everything is a system. And because it's a system, all I have to do is separate the information that I've been given to the system that it is. And then I take the decision to go up to the highest level of immediate response of thought to who knows the most about that system that I could access right now. Hmm. Do you ever think that way? Or well, do you kind of do it just internally and that's how it is? No, I think, no, I think I do it probably in different, different areas, but I don't, I never have equated it to a system and I, I, yeah. Well, the elder care system, you didn't mm -hmm. call a visiting nurse for emergency care. You called an elder care person in the system. Mm -hmm. So if you cut yourself, you go to the emergency care system to get the stitches. Mm -hmm. You don't go to a, and set an appointment up with a bone surgeon. No. Because that's not his system. Right, um, yeah, mm -hmm. right. So I, I want you to think, what about faith? Is faith a system? Did God set his operative nature as a systematic functionality 
The word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. There is the system that God ordained called the law of faith that is in operation. So if the world, which is a system, operating by its lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, or the enemy, and I am operating in the system of the kingdom of God, then I must know what to do. And if I know what to do, and I know the system that I'm in, then my functionality becomes immediately intact because it's the system of his kingdom. What are some of the laws of the system? It's in his word, in your mouth and in your heart. Mm -hmm. And the word of God says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so sometimes I tell people, if you're in a situation, okay, find, find the scriptures about what you're facing. Because when you find it in the Word of God, then you, you're able to access what it is that you're, you need. Okay. So when we think about the dimension of operating in the Spirit and entering into His rest, it is a place that I must take an action to access. Mm -hmm. Now, li listen to what it says. It says, for we have, now, this is, this is powerful. Seeing, verse 14, now after the word of God is quick, it's alive, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, nothing is not out of his knowledge. Everything is naked and open to whom we all have to give an account. Everything is seen, everything is known. Nothing is out of his authority. Seeing, verse 14, which means we must see that, that the, systematic operation of the living Word of God has complete disclosure and complete unveiling of everything. Seeing we have such a high priest, great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession for we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. So let us, verse 16, therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. Now, it's a system. God is a spirit the systematic functionality of his spiritual laws are in my mouth and in my heart. The need occurs. God is going to meet my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If I do not engage in the kingdom of God's systematic in authority, utilizing his word, speaking it, he talked about finding a scripture, well, what if I don't know a scripture that deals with elder care? Mm. What scripture deals with elder care? I'm sure there are scriptures that deal with elder care. Yeah, I know, but uh, okay, <laughs> okay, so. so but well, there are scriptures that deal with peace. Right. That deal with ask and you shall receive. So. So it, it doesn't have to deal specifically with the topic. No, but just the circumstances um, that are revolving it. Like, for instance, you're in a situation, so say it's something about one of your kids at school, and you could either get all anxious and upset and worried and, you know, start calling all around trying to, instead of just quieting yourself before God to hear the wisdom of God, to access the peace of God that's within you so that, and God speaks to us in all sorts of ways. It might be, I mean, obviously, Pastor, when the young man came in about the part, God used you to speak to him about, go call a trailer <laughs> company. Well, so, that, it's, it's because it's not, 
to me, now, and these are, I, and I believe this is a critical path of, of understanding the, the world we live in. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is the violation of the law. All right? So you have a problem and you say, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's sin because you do know what to do. Mm. You have the mind of Christ. So you say, well, I need somebody like you to help me. Okay, so we're here. We're helping you. The, the point being is that Jesus is the high priest of your profession. If I say, I just can't figure this out. I don't know what I'm going to do next. He is not able to take those words and mm -hmm. act on them. Right. Because you've, you've made that profession, that confession, I don't know what to do. Right. You, you've done exactly what it says not to do. Mm -hmm. You've entered into unbelief. And that is the the reality of having your environment tell you you are inadequate, dysfunctional, incapable of handling life. And when that voice is speaking to you and you agree with it, you've stepped into unbelief. When that occurs, the example is horrific. Forty years in the wilderness, and everybody died in their problem. When I know that, I am not willing at mm -hmm. any point in time, no matter how complex the environment, to give my life to destruction. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. I, I just will not give my life to the hand of destruction knowing that when I speak in agreement with the controversy, the conflict, the frustration, the aggravation, the strife, the division, I'm saying to God's example, I'm willing to take the rest of my life and die in my misery. To me, that's what that says to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but all Scripture is given inspiration by God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. The man of God would be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. And I read that the Israelites could not enter in, and God's anger was kindled against them because they would never get the fact that man does not live by what he engages, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceeds from the right. mouth of God does he live. Because so, of their unbelief. And they kept speaking it. Yeah. Murmuring, negativity, frustration, aggravation. So, where are you at? What are you saying? That's why we want to help you with your faith today. Help you understand the reality of the world that we all live in. And we're going to give you a free digital download for you to put on your phone, hear the message on your computer, on your iPad, your tablet. It's called Prevail Through Profession and Action. Prevail through your statements and the action. Prevail Through Profession and Action. It's called Web Offer 137. And you get that at on our digital download, make sure you get web offer 137. It's shop.jesusexperience.com. And we want to give that to you, help you grow in your faith. Now, Pastor Judy, you, you have people calling and praying and mm -hmm. having problems every day. Some do require action because the catastrophic events that occurred. But 
What would happen if everyone just prevailed through what they said and took the actions from the wisdom of God that's within? Mm -hmm. what, what, on the scope of all the people that we touch in the body of Christ, what would happen to them? Well, I believe they would, um, they would access that wisdom of God right where they were and watch God do the supernatural miracles and we'd be getting a lot more testimonies <laughs> instead of prayer requests, although the Word of God does tell us to agree in prayer. You know, the Word of God right. tells us, call for the elders of the church and have them pray for you. And so I believe that when... Um, that when we agree with another person, pray with another person, that we're, we're obeying the Word of God, we're accessing what God has told us to have. Um, but I don't think that we have to call for every little situation because I believe we have it right within ourselves. And we can access that wisdom right within us. So you're, you're, you're not telling them don't call. Oh, no. No, no, no. Okay. But you are giving instruction that every one of us are called by God to enter into that rest. Exactly. The and, same wisdom that you have, yeah. Pastor Gary, is the same wisdom that they have. No, there's no, no, God's no respecter of persons. Right. Yeah, it's the same Jesus. But some people think that they have to hear it from you or have to, like, like we had someone that called the other day. Um, and you were out of town. You were traveling. But they said to me, I only want to talk to Pastor Gary. I only want Pastor Gary to pray for me. And so I got the call. And I was telling them, you have that same, the same thing that Pastor Gary has. You have it. You have it right within your spirit. It doesn't come from Pastor Gary. Right. It comes from the wisdom of God. And I, and I said to them, you know, this is exactly what Pastor Gary ministers about and preaches, that you have it right within you. Why would you feel like you have to speak to Pastor Gary? He's the only one that can pray with you. He's the only one that has the answer for you. When the answer, we all have it. It's, it's within us. So, the real of our walk, I, I, I always envision I'm going to meet Jesus. And I know that there's no one else that I can say they didn't tell me enough. They didn't pray for me long enough. They didn't disciple me sufficiently. They, I, 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 because everything will then absolutely be completely out of my hands, totally disclosed. It says we get judged for every idle word. Mm -hmm. I mean, that alone mm -hmm. is enough to watch what I say. Then the reward comes only for what he said that we did. And I, I find it very difficult to... hold another person responsible or accountable in any way for any outcome in my life, including myself. I don't even judge myself because I don't have the capacity of judging me. I judge myself forgiven, righteous, holy, unblameable. And if somebody says to me, you said something that was offensive or off color, then I would listen to what they said and, you know, think, well, okay, well, if they were affected by what I said, then, you know, forgive me and, Let's just loose this thing and move on. 
But outside of that, I just believe that I'm the most complete on the face of the earth that God put here. Don't you? <laughs> yes, Pastor. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what you believe about you? I, I do. I do. Is that hard for you to say? I think so, a little bit. Why? Um, because, um, well, I do believe that, but I, I believe that I don't always do the right thing or say the right thing, um, but... So how do you know if you ever do it wrong? If I ever do it wrong? Right. If it just... What do you believe about you intrinsically, fundamentally, and relationally with God? And then what does it take for you to find out you're going down a wrong path, you're doing something incorrect. Or... Oh, the, the Holy Spirit, definitely. The Holy Spirit. Okay, it so. It speaks within me and lets me know, or, you know, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So then, if you're complete in Christ, you're whole, you're fully intact. And God is a profession, the, the high priest of your profession, and, and it says, come boldly that you may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need, for we have not a high priest that can be touched, that couldn't be touched because he has been touched with feelings of infirmities, with all points he was tempted like we are, yet without sin. So that puts me in an absolute winning mindset mm -hmm. because I cannot even perceive Anything that comes against me that I've not been made more than a conqueror in, I just, I just cannot think that as God's vessel of purpose and identity on the earth, that unless God and my conscience become so aware that I am grossly in error, I'm even going to give consideration or concern for it. I'm just going to believe that I'm doing the will of God, that what is before me is the acts that God's called, that I'm in the right place, the right time. I'm doing the correct thing. I'm functional in the grace of God, and I'm the best God has. I believe that. But there's, there's this, this hesitance, right? A little bit. I, I, and I think because probably the way that you confess all that, I, I, don't, I probably have not confessed all that stuff about myself. Okay, I, I confess so. it about the circumstances, the people in my life, but probably um, as you're saying it all, I'm thinking... Well, I just don't go around confessing all that about myself on a day-to-day -day basis. But why wouldn't you? I, I need to. I, I'm going to faster. Yeah. <laughs> See, here we're having prevailing through profession and action. For, for example, I, I have a list of responsibilities that just goes from page to page to page to page to page, of which... I know for a fact I am only going to address maybe 2% of them. 98% mm -hmm. are going to be left to the grace of God to just work on. I stepped into a conversation today when I stepped into one of the offices and one of the, the employees was saying, well, what about this? What about that? And I said, hold it. Work out your own salvation. God bless you. And I hung up. But, because it was nothing more than, what about this, what about that, what about this, what yeah. about that? And it's not about, what about this, what about that? It's about, it's in front of you, make a decision, know you're making the right one, and if you don't, you'll find out when you do. It's, it's really that simple. It, because I, I look at your life, Pastor, and I think sometimes, wow, he needs like 10 people around him all the time to do all these tasks that he, that you need done. And, and I look at you and think, 
how does he handle all that? Because of all the things that you're involved in, you know, not, not just the ministry here, but the global outreach and his, you know, the traveling and the ministering. And, and I think, wow, you need about 10 people around you that you can say, go do this, go do that. <laughs> but you just seem to flow through it. Yeah, see, I, I don't have an assistant that is managing all the things around my life. Now, Which I, ama- is amazing. <laughs> now, one thing that I, I in the, the education initiative, I, I absolutely require a, uh, an administrative individual that has capacity of doing Gantt charts. And all, if you don't know what one is, look it up. And all of the, the necessary tasks and timelines and delegations of responsibility to multiple areas of engineering and, and social development and integration of churches and all the different things of education that go on. Because uh, it's inside here, but it needs to come out to a functionality and timeline to accomplish the objective. So that is someone that now uh, responsibility has exceeded my ability on an individual basis to just execute it. And so uh, I get that. So I call that into being. I thank (laughs) God for that person that is the perfect individual to integrate and cooperate with me in the administrative authority that has capacity of all interaction with mediums and medias of communication and integration of personalities and universities and high schools and elementary and pre-K and all the different dimensions of education, including churches and all the things necessary. God, I thank you for that person. They are blessed. Work with me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, so. So, Pastor, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you ever get overwhelmed? with all the responsibility and all the when, things that have been given to you to do. I, I tell you what happens with me. When I am not speaking the word ruling the environment, mm-hmm. ha- have you ever seen a spark inside of a, uh, a light switch and, and the light flickers? Mm-hmm. Y- you know it's not connected because there's like yeah. an inter- inter- interruption. I begin to feel that that break of current, if you will, the, mm-hmm. the interruptive dysfunction of not being connected properly. When it's not the amount of load that's coming through the wire, because I can handle everything God gives to me mm-hmm. and function in it perfectly. But if my connectivity is even a little bit abrasive, I, I feel the the flicker, if you will, the, the inner interruption of all of the, the connectivity is supposed to be there. That's when I've got to stop and say, I need to get my connection right here. Mm -hmm. And the connection's not with the tasks because I'm capable of every task given to me, but my connection is with God so that it's his work not mine. And so that's my, my signal. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I feel that, that flickering of the, the light of Christ is, is intermittent and I'm, it's starting to spark. And how I know it sparks is I don't really hear what people are saying to me around me. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer listening. I'm now interrupted. So I can't function in a, a capacity of the next thing that's occurring. Which I think, like on a smaller scale, um, the situation with my mother-in-law last night, whenever I'm in a situation where I begin to lose my peace and I feel like I'm, you know, I'm about to lose it, that's when that connection right. is interrupted. It's not there. And I have to get back into a place of peace and back into hearing God and back into knowing I am sufficient. Exactly. In all things because Jesus Christ is in me and he is sufficient. So, yeah. It's not about the load that's Mm -hmm. on you. 
Right. It's about the connectivity of that load flowing through you. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. I mean, just think about it. You got 12 kids. Some of them have kids. You've got grandkids that are having conflicts that are mm -hmm. creating new everything. And then you've got grandma who's 90 and mm -hmm. all that world and pastoring in the church and the, the relationships with staffing and the people that are caring for people that we're caring for. And you could say, well, that's a whole lot. But it's not a whole lot. I mean, there's people running corporations of 40, 50,000 people. They're managing budgets of 20, 30 billion dollars a year that have the responsibility of the livelihood of all of these people and the creative decision making of the pathing of a product or service. And they may not even be Christians. That's true. Yeah. How they cope with it may be with drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. other vent systems. But for us as believers, it is really the connectivity that makes a difference. It's strive to enter into that rest labor because everything you can handle all things are for your sake yeah. that the abundant grace or the thanksgiving of many may redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not though our outward man perish yet our inward man is renewed day by day because we don't faint now just how would you handle 12 children a 90 year old parent that you're caring for, that you're responsible to keep alive until they finally transition. How would you handle the responsibility of, of managing a thousand families and all of their, their life situations and having a staff that's under you and being responsible to somebody like me? <laughs> and Who asks these piercing questions. Yeah. I, don't I mean, you live there? <laughs> yeah. I, because I, I know that if we don't live there, we're toast. Yeah, exactly. We we are absolutely toast. <laughs> you you can't do it. You can't make it. You can't if you're not living there in the presence of God. So you know, let, let me just give you a picture. I I have an international component in my life from God that has responsibility over these nations to see the people fed, cared for, trained in the Word of God, raised up in an educational environment, fulfill their objectivity in calling and dimension of their vocation, see that their income is sufficient to support their family systems, and see the local churches are built sufficiently biblically based so they can establish the lives of the people that we're caring for, that they're cared for. So that's, that's part of my functionality in God. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody says, well, how can you do that? I don't do that. God does that. Exactly. It's not my work. It's yeah. God's work. I mean, are you kidding me? What, how, and how could somebody ever take on that type of whatever and think they're going to do it? They have to know they're in connection. And everything that God puts through is going to get through. Mm -hmm. Then there's the part that has to take care of all the finances of our everyday life. Make sure that all of our bills are paid and all the things that everything that goes on in our, in our everyday life is mm -hmm. covered. And the business investments and the houses renovations and all the things that happen in the church facilities. And uh, you say, well, how do you do that? Same way. It's the work of God. It's all His. Family is his, finances are his, ministry is his, I am his. You say, well, what happens if you break down physically? Everything else keeps going on. Mm. Because we didn't build it on me. We build it on him. And so I want you to settle today that your striving, your work, is to enter into that rest of God. Your mission, if you will, and if you think about the law of faithful and little, 
faithful in much, you're not going to get less in life. You're going to get more in life. When you enter into the rest of God, your response to God's ability is going to increase exponentially. Just, just think about what you're up for in your next season of life. You managed one child. You did good. God gives you ten. <laughs> you think, I don't want ten. Well, somebody's got to take ten. I mean, there, there's more than ten children out there to be cared for. You find out that you can bring your family into a functionality. God gives you a thousand families. You, you become faithful in the little. God gives you rule over cities. Well, how big's a city? Uh, it could be 40, 50 million. It could be 20 million. It just depends on how connected you are. Uh, can I share another little secret? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The word anointing is an interesting word. It is also translated the fatness of a neck. So you think about if you put a yoke on an ox and you keep feeding the ox and the yoke is at a certain level, that ox's neck keeps growing and growing and growing and by simple growth, it breaks the yoke. So then what happens? Another yoke is put on. So my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the anointing is not just the personal presence of God. It is also the increase of your functionality. It's like if you're driving 110 volts through a wire, you might use a size 20 or 12 wire, maybe a 16 wire. But if you're going to drive 220 volts or 400 volts, you're going to start using a cable that might be a four-aught, a, a large cable, because it's not the fact that the electric current won't go through, it's that its size is not capable to handle the current. Increase comes from faithfulness. Expansion allows greater dimension of God to function through your life. Prevailing through your profession, prevailing through your actions, creates capacity. He that is faithful in least will be faithful in much. Does God want to give you less or does he want to give you more? More. Does, yeah. More. God doesn't want mm -hmm. you to restrict and reduce. God wants you to expand and increase. The increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. How does he, he increases it through us. Mm -hmm. So tonight, as we're about coming to a close and our prayer ministers are online and our family is there chatting back and forth with you in our, in our chat room, we encourage you to do that and just ask questions and, and get engaged with the experience of the life of Jesus within. Pastor Judy, I, I can, if somebody has a life-altering, catastrophic crisis, I don't even have to think, is Pastor Judy going to deal with it functionality adequately and bring the people through to a peaceable end? I know it because that's in her capacity of functionality. Now, you could take somebody else, put them in that same environment, and they would absolutely blow a gasket. They, their fuse would pop. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't know what to do, where to go, how to handle it. It's not because they weren't capable. It's because their capability did not increase. So. As you begin to speak about yourself, about your environment, about your family, about your finances, about the call and purpose of God in your life, knowing that Jesus is a high priest of your profession, keep 
that proclamation intact. Don't let anything disturb your peace. If you start feeling that frazzled environment, don't look to lighten the load. Look to make the connection because God only wants to increase the load coming through you. And when you understand that, it's a system. It's a system of increase. It's a system of advancing in the kingdom of God. I, I often wondered when I looked at the scripture, why did God take Moses and start him at 80? Why did God have Joshua go 40 years in the wilderness and then really launch him after Moses went home. Mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the development time in John Mark's life where he walked away from Paul and Paul didn't want to hear any more from him. Mm -hmm. But John Mark ends up sitting with Peter being the scribe for Peter, and he writes the book of Mark. And he was the one who had fear and ran out, but his capacity increased. Later, Paul says, I, would you please send John Mark? He's needful for me in the ministry. And, I, and that's why he was in, in prison in Rome. And I, I think many times we because we face circumstances and we, we didn't cope with them correctly or deal with them rightly, we can count ourselves out and say, God's not going to use me. God's not going to work mm -hmm. through me. But that's the very place to make your connection. Exactly. Every place of pressure is your place of promotion. Mm -hmm. It's always your place of promotion. So don't ever push away the pressure identify what his benefit is in your life. That's why we're going to give you this series, Prevail Through Profession and Action. Web offer 137, free digital download, shop.jesusexperience.com. Well, Pastor Judy and I love you. We want you to call us, get involved with us, and why don't you just pray for him right now? Just thank God for the graces on their life. We're just going to pray right now and just Believe God for everything He's purposed for you. That yes, you God. are walking in it. You're going to walk in it because God has spoken it concerning your life before the foundation of the world. Father, we just come through the blood of Jesus. Thanking you, Lord God, that you have equipped us for everything. That we're graced for everything that we face, God, because your grace is sufficient for us. I thank you, Father, for each person that has joined us on this webinar, for those that are watching the webinar, Lord, and I just thank you, Jesus, that you are moving and working in their life. I thank you, God, that there is no weapon formed thank against God. them that's going to prosper. I thank you, Lord God, that they do have that connection with the Holy Spirit, and they're staying connected, hearing your voice, God. I thank you that Hearing your voice is not something that's hard. It's, it's, we hear your voice, God, in a strange voice we don't follow. We, we hear in our spirits what you're guiding us, leading us, directing us to do. And we just thank you, Father, that people are encouraged and lifted knowing that you are working in their life to bring about your good pleasure in them. Thank you, Jesus, for the yes, work that you're God. doing through your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you. And don't forget, I'm going to be with you Sunday morning. So you're going to enjoy the journey in the kingdom of God. God bless. We love you. God bless you. Good.